Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting game uh, from the last round of the 2018 Candidates Tournament. Uh, I, I thought I, I wasn't going to show any more games uh, from the tournament, uh, but it, would be, it wouldn't be fair to Ding Liren as uh, he is the only player who went undefeated this entire tournament. So 14 rounds uh, against uh, the world's greatest players and uh, none of them could, could beat him even in a single game. And uh, going into this round, uh, both uh, both Ding Liren and uh, Sergey Karakin had a chance to win the candidates, but both of them have to win their games, uh, especially Ding. Uh, Ding had to win, and everyone else who was contending for first place had to lose their game uh, for him uh, even to have a chance. So, yeah, it was it was quite uh, quite a feisty battle, and um, uh, the position uh, that uh, that you know. Uh, appeared on the board, uh, didn't really favor either of them, and uh, neither of them wanted to draw, uh, but, uh, you know, th there wasn't really really much to do here. Uh, so let's uh, let's see a couple of photos here. We do have a nice close-up of Ding Liren here, uh, and we do have a nice uh, photo of Sergei Karakin. You can see that he's uh, well-rested, and uh, maybe even too well-rested. Uh, but, okay, l let's see this game. Uh, so, Karakin opens it with e4, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. So, the Ruy Lopez. Uh, a6, Morphe's defense, bishop to a4, and now knight to f6. Uh, we have castles, bishop to e7, d3, b5, uh, bishop to b3, and d6. This is all standard theory. And uh, here, white has uh, a lot of options. You can go a4, you can go knight c3, you can go h3. Uh, a lot of different uh, ideas you, you can try here if you want to if you want to play uh, e4 you have to you have to know all of these ideas uh, but uh, Karakin goes for a3 it's a it's a slightly different idea which uh, which kind of seems like it allows white to play for advantage but uh, you know basically he, he has to try something he does have the white pieces uh, and uh, he, he would definitely like to win this game uh, here Ding castles we have knight to c3 and now bishop to g4 uh, preparing the entrance of this knight to d to d4. Uh, so bishop to e3. Now comes knight to d4, attacking the bishop on b3, uh, and also now attacking the pin piece, the knight on f3. Uh, basically for forcing white to give up the bishop pair. Uh, so bishop captures on d4, e captures on d4, and now knight to d5. And here uh, ding goes c5. Uh, capturing the knight isn't isn't a problem for black. You could capture, and after bishop captures. Rook to c8, bishop to c6 uh, does seem like a, like a very annoying move, uh, but uh, it's it's all going to be good. I mean, the, the bishop uh, on g4 is spinning this knight on f3 nicely. White will have to push h3 at some point uh, if he wants to play anything at all, and then black will simply go back, and after the exchange happens, uh, it's a perfectly fine position for both white and black. Uh, so after knight to d5, uh, probably if uh, Dingo was interested in a draw, maybe... Maybe he would capture it, but uh, he does have to keep his options open. So, so c5. Uh, we have a4 now, uh, bishop to e6, and knight captures on f6. Bishop captures on f6, bishop captures on e6, and f captures on e6. And uh, it uh, doesn't seem that this is uh, better for black than the line we just showed, uh, but uh, there is a lot of imbalance to the position, which, which could create some, uh, some winning chances without uh, worsening uh, the position too much. So uh, queen to e2, uh, maybe preparing e5 in some in some variations. Queen to d7. Uh, now preparing after a captures on b5 and a captures on b5. Rook captures on a8, and now this rook will be a, will be able to recapture on a8. So uh, b3, uh, we have e5 now. Uh, rook to a2, preparing to double up on the a file uh, and b4. So clo uh, Ding decides to close the a file. Uh, knight to d2, uh, by playing this b4 move, uh, Ding is no longer controlling the c4 square. So now this uh, knight is pre preparing to come to c4, uh, white will push a5 at some point, and then from there he will be able to jump to b6, uh, maybe he won't even have to, maybe he will simply stay on c4 to maybe pressure d6, uh, a lot of ideas for this knight here. Uh, so rook a to e8, and now uh, rook a2 uh, back to a1, as there's no point in doubling rooks on the a file, now the rook will come back. Uh, bishop to d8, uh, now controlling this a5 square, maybe even preparing to push a5 himself. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, you definitely want, want a bishop there. Even if white pushes a5, uh, this rook will always have to stay on a1, so it will it, it will have to protect this pawn if it's ever pushed. 
Uh, here we have g3 uh, with the idea of pushing f4. And if uh, Ding decided to play something like g6 here, uh, we would most definitely see f4, e captures, rook captures, rook captures, and g captures. And uh, after rook to f8, rook to f1 uh, with... Uh, with a decent position for both white and black um maybe maybe white because of his grip uh, in the center is slightly better but uh, nothing nothing too serious uh, but after g3 ding played g5 and this uh, this was a shock to everyone why why would you play a move like this uh but uh, it's actually it's actually the most precise move maybe not the most precise but it uh, it definitely accomplishes w what needs to be accomplished uh it prevents uh, f4 here uh, another thing is, um, if if Karakin could get this knight from d2 all the way to f5, uh, this would be this would probably be a winning position for White. Uh, the problem is that there is no way for you to actually do it. Uh, here, Karakin played knight to c4, uh, but if you tried something like uh, f3, for example, f3 with the idea of maybe playing rook to f2, uh, going knight to f1, pushing g4, then bringing your knight to g3, and then to f5. Uh, this simply doesn't work because black will simply play normal developing moves and he will stop you uh, before you're able to execute this. Uh, rook to f2, now queen to g7 and after you play knight to f1, uh, black will simply push h5 and now your idea is just silly and your pieces are looking pretty terrible. Of course if you push uh, g4 you will get h4, uh, this will not allow your knight to come to, to g3, you will not be able to come to e3 and you will never be able to, to get that to that f5 square. Uh, so after this, uh, uh, after this uh, g3 move and g5, Karakin went knight to c4. Uh, so uh, rook to e6 and now a5, uh, preparing, uh, uh, preparing to bring this knight to b6 if needed. Uh, so this rook can move from the a file. The knight uh, on b6 will will prevent the bishop from capturing the a5 pawn. Uh, here we have uh, rook to f6 now, doubling up on the f file and now f3, uh, h5. We have knight to b6 uh, and now queen to f7. Uh, we have a queen, a queen rook, uh, a rook queen rook formation on the f file by Ding. Uh, king to g2 and now comes h4. And uh, this is uh, uh, definitely the critical moment in the game. Uh, here, uh, whether whether you like it or not, you have to play g captures on h4. Uh, followed by g captures on h4 and now bring the knight back to c4 uh, the knight will be useful there he will uh, pressure this d6 pawn and it doesn't matter any rook to g6 check king to h1 your your own rooks will come to the g file and all will be well uh, but after this h4 move uh, Karakin missed this idea because he missed uh, a, a very nice threat by ding he played knight to d5 uh, with the idea of attacking this rook on f6 and it doesn't seem like the rook has anywhere to go you can't go you can't stay on f6 you can't go to f5 you can't go to f4 uh, you, you'd have to move it uh, but uh, moving the rook moving the rook will only re result in a better position for white for example rook to g6 then you capture on h4 a black recaptures you move the king and you get the position we discussed uh, but uh, 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 deciding to do this uh, differently with, a dis with the dismove order, uh, kind of playing knight to d5 being an improvement as it forces the rook to move voluntarily uh, or involuntarily. Uh, here, uh, feel free to pause the, pause the video and find uh, the nice uh, combination that uh, Sergei missed and the ding found. So, as usual, I will give it a couple of seconds. Uh, feel free, you know, to, to enjoy this position. Uh, so for those of you who found the move, congratulations! And the follow-up on the move, even 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 more important. Uh, you are an excellent player. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, here Ding played h3. Seems like a weird move, uh, of course, but uh, it's really not. Uh, you can't grab the pawn. You have to go back with the king, and then you, you're you're in trouble because uh, not enough pieces are defending the f3 pawn. A problem is if you capture here, then you get the immediate follow-up g4, and now you lose the game. Uh, you lose because if you go back, then simply g captures on f3, uh, wins an entire rook. Uh, you have to react to this or you lose a queen. Rook captures, rook captures, and now you're down a rook. Uh, black is completely winning here. Uh, another thing after this h3 and king captures and g4, you can't go to h4. If you play king h4, rook to g6, opens up a discover check from the bishop, not allowing you uh, to go back to h3. Uh, also, the rook is now protecting the pawn. Uh, you can only block this check once. Now bishop captures, and this is checkmate. Uh, after king to h5 and the queen to h7. And another thing, 
uh, after this g4 move F you can even capture the pawn but now you get uh, queen to d7 check king moves queen to h7 check now uh, and after king moves rook to g6 and this is once again checkmate so this is uh, one trick Sergei missed and now he's forced to go to g1 and he loses the f3 pawn uh, here rook captures on f3 was played and here uh, he did blunder a pawn okay but uh, again uh, you know he was uh, he was really uh, uh, composed and uh, he played the g4 g4 is the strongest engine move uh, with the idea that you have to play it if you decide to go rook captures on f3 uh, queen captures queen captures and the rook captures uh, now you have a problem uh, you uh, you could try knight to b6 uh, but then after king to f7 you have to go rook to f1 uh, and now rook captures king captures now a black will lock in the position by playing g4 himself uh, and the pawns here are completely blocking the white king from entering the position and uh, now the the black king will simply uh, get closer try and capture this knight uh, if the knight moves then the king will simply come all the way to b5 and then the bishop will win the pawn and then black will win the game uh, so g4 a very important move the only move that uh, saves the position for white uh, the idea is uh, king to g7 uh, now rook to f3 uh, queen to f3, queen captures, rook captures, and now rook to f1. Uh, rook captures, king captures, and now bishop captures on a1. So uh, he did have to give up uh, this a pawn, but uh, now after playing g4, uh, the king can enter the position, and also uh, the king will grab this h3 pawn. So maybe h4 will be an idea in the future, uh, allowing actually white to have some winning chances. But you never know. Uh, knight to e7, we have king to f6, and now knight to f5. An excellent square for the knight, uh, and it, it'd be great if he could just stay there, you know, eyeing the d6 pawn, but uh, black played, of course, king to e5, uh, and will, of course, uh, push d5, he, he won't allow this d6 pawn to stay at target. Uh, knight to g3, now this knight uh, has to go back, uh, we have bishop to d8, and now knight to h1, uh, with ideas of coming to f2, and then uh, gu guarding the e pawn from there. Uh, we have a5, now comes king to e2, you do have to bring the king over to the queen side now to help out with the defense after black pushes a4. Uh, d5 now, knight to f2, uh, we have king moves, uh, e captures on d5, king captures on d5, and now knight to e4. Uh, again, an excellent score for the knight, now it uh, attacks the c4, uh, the, the, the c5 pawn and also the g5 pawn, uh, but the bishop uh, will have no problems guarding against both of these threats. King to c6, now uh, the king is coming to help out with uh, with uh, the execution of a4. Uh, king to d2, we have bishop to e7, now the bishop is guarding both of these pawns that are attacked by the knight. Uh, king c1, king b5, king b2, and now a4. Uh, what do you do here? Uh, it doesn't really matter, you could capture and after king captures go king a2, doesn't really matter. Uh, in the game after a4, uh, we have king to a2, and here ding simply pushed a3. Uh, and it was in this position that uh, Sergei Karakin and Ding Liren agreed to a draw. As uh, black is black is up a pawn, but there is no way there is no way to actually push anything here. Uh, there's no way for for for, uh, for black to make any progress here. Uh, white can always simply win this pawn, and uh, then it's it's really nothing. There's no way uh, to enter the position. Uh, all of uh, all of Karakin's uh, pawns are are on light squares. Uh, except this one, but after you capture the h3 pawn and push h3, uh, there is no way for this bishop to ever be a useful piece. All of all of uh, Ding's pawns are on dark squares, so it would be it, the engine is giving a two point uh, two advantage to black, but it doesn't matter. There's no way to to actually win this. So yeah, uh, that's the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. And uh, yeah, uh, once again, Ding Liren is the only player who went undefeated this entire event. So 14 rounds against uh, the world's greatest grandmasters and no, no one was able to defeat him. And uh, it's not like uh, Giri did in uh, his run in the candidates where he drew all the games. Ding Liren even won one game. And uh, I, I forgot to show you the results in the previous video, so here are the results uh, and some uh, statistics uh, after 14 rounds of the 2018 Candidates Tournament. Uh, as we all know, Caru uh, Fabiano Caruana won the tournament with 8 points, uh, then we have in second place Mamedyarov with 7.5, Karakin with 7.5, then Ding Liren with 7. Uh, Alexander Grishu with 6.5, Vladimir Kramnik with 6, Wesley So with 6, and Levon Aronian in last place with 4.5 points. 
So uh, not the greatest uh, of tournaments for Levon Aronia. I'm sure he will immediately forget about this as in three days uh, the Grand KHS Classic starts uh, where he will again face off against uh, <laughs> Caruana, Vishwanathan Anand, um, Maxim Vachier and uh, of course Magnus Carlsen and a lot of other players. Uh, but you can see also uh, how many rating points the players won all the way to the right of the table. Uh, Caruana won 15 rating points, 15.4, which brings him uh, all the way to again entering the 2800 club. Uh, Mamedyarov stays in the 2800 club, he even won some points. Uh, Karakin also won about 15 points, 14.9. Uh, and a lot of other place, uh, people won some points, Ding Liren won 8.7, and uh, the people who lost points are Kramnik with 8 points, he then drops out of the 2800 club, Wesley So also, he lost 13 points, and Levon Aronian lost 26.6 ELO points, uh, and uh, he's now no longer, uh, he's now no longer even in the top 10 chess players of the world by, by live rating. Uh, but uh, I don't think as it, the month is almost over, then it will no longer be only live rating, but also, you know, standard rating uh, as the first of the month, you know, the, the rating updates. So yeah, uh, that's the game. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Paul Givens, uh, Paul Sano, Martin Wilbur, Douglas Jennings, James Norwood and Gerard Rabel for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, once again, uh, I would like to thank Nikki for, uh, for sending uh, us her photos uh, from the candidates tournament so we can enjoy them. Uh, as usual, in the description below, all of the links to her social media will be there. Feel free to follow her if you enjoy some chess photography. And yeah. Uh, on and off topic, uh, I, I picked up Hearthstone again and uh, I've, I've been playing for like a week now and I managed to get to rank 6, uh, almost rank 5, maybe maybe I'll get to rank 5 today. Uh, so I will also put my, uh, uh, what's it called, Blizzard handle in the description below if you wanna, if you wanna, you know, get, get together and maybe, maybe play a few games. So yeah, uh, and may, maybe I'll, may, maybe I'll even make a, a Hearthstone video or two, who knows. So yeah, once again, thank you all for watching and I will see you soon.